We got bad news and good news, everyone. The bad news first is that my friend who I was renting the Duramax out to for the summer decided to hydroplane it and hit a guardrail on the interstate, and now it won't start, and it's stuck in Massachusetts. The good news is I just got my CDL today. I took the test today and got the CDL. So we can go take my big truck down and tow it back, because you know the other trailer would not be heavy duty enough to take this big old Duramax back. So this will be the first time I'm actually towing with that big Volvo truck that I got from auction. Uh, we'll see how it does. There's a couple things I gotta do to the trailer and truck first. Well, the truck needs tires really badly, it needs some batteries. But then the trailer I gotta put a winch on so I can actually tow that big Duramax onto the trailer. I could try to fix the truck in Boston, but that could potentially cause me to go back and forth a couple times if I don't get it fixed. So this will just save me a trip, possibly. So here we are at the truck. The weather did get a little iffy out. Uh, I have to put <clears throat> a couple new batteries in there so it'll start up. And then we're gonna disconnect it from the trailer here. I've got the electrical undone. Hopefully it doesn't get too much water in it. And then you pull the lock and release lever out. Landing gear is up. Thundering, but the new battery is in. I will replace these soon. It's been a few months since it was last started. Let the glow plugs go. Wow, look at that. This thing is money. This button here puts the rear suspension down. I think we dropped. And uh, let's try to slide it forward. Excellent though. Got her uncoupled. Let's go get new tires for this thing. All right, so we made it here to Pizza Tire Barn. It's back there getting the new tires on it. Don't worry, I didn't cheap out on these tires. They're running me like 600 a pop, so they're the nicest ones they had. All right, and they're all set. Brand stinking new tires. No more of that wobble at all. Very nice. And I bought a winch for it. This is a 9,000 pound winch. That truck's curb weight is about 8,000 pounds. So it should be all right. All right, so we're gonna install this winch here. Gotta drill some holes and then put it here actually instead. Okay, the holes are drilled. We're gonna put the winch in, see if I drilled the holes in the right spot. Okay, it fits. Ah, there's the bolt. Hopefully that holds it. Definitely thundering out, no doubt about it. Let's put it together. So I can take these wires straight from the winch and plug them right into the battery box right there. And then just unplug them and tie them up every time I'm done. That's the plan. So I had to drill them out a little bit here. Looks like they're fitting on now. So we'll lock them down. See if that works. Let's test it out. Oh. I thought there was supposed to be a brake on this. I'm wondering why there's not a brake. Maybe it needs to be in the in position. Oh, there's the brake, yeah. And then if you put it in the out position, I guess you can just pull it. I'll go walk it down. Nice. We can just hook it to the tow hook of the truck and tow it on up. That's perfect. New day, we're back on site to make the maiden voyage. We're gonna head out. I gotta stop at the hardware store first to get some more ratchet straps and then we'll be on the road. All right, I got all my stuff, here we go.
stopped here at the common man rest stop for a little clam chowder and some diesel fuel couldn't get any diesel because they don't have any diesel pumps for big trucks but got the clam chowder moving on In case you didn't see, we were stuck in god-awful traffic for like 45 minutes, so that extended the trip quite a bit. Getting some diesel now, finally found a spot. So I got back into the truck to start it, nothing. No power to the cab. It actually cranked for a second and then stopped. So I'm down here troubleshooting. I was confused, I'm getting 12 volts at the battery, 12.9 volts. I think this is my problem here at the positive terminal. Looks like that corroded away. I'm just gonna try to just clean this up with a little wire brush and put it back on and then hopefully get another fish eye. So I wiped it all off with this little wire brush. It's still sparking, so it's not getting great connection, but let's see if that's enough to start it. Oh, wait a minute, I got power there. I got power to it. Yeah, no, nothing. Okay, we'll try that one more time. I feel like I got a better connection that time. Come on, baby. Yes. Yes. All right, we're gonna go to Lowe's and actually get some uh, bolts and nuts and fix this. Lowe's. Let's fix this thing. So I got some fish eyes, some wire strippers, and then I have my pliers over there to crimp it. there and I am thankful that it's not on a busy road looks like this is a pretty lightly traveled street okay we're at the yard he's got it way tucked back over here won't run I did confirm that kind of want to mess around and try to get it to run but it's got low battery I might just at least check to see if the fuel filter is primed here she is in all her damaged glory so just a front end accident. Not sure why it won't run just because of this. I'd like to be able to see, but the hood is a little stuck closed. Looks like I can pry the hood open with this screwdriver here. All right, we're in. Here's the fuel primer. Let's see if it's getting anything. Felt like it didn't have anything there when I first hit it. There we go, there's something. Get the air out of that. All right, I think I got all the air out of that now. So let's see if it fires up now. I cranked it once and it had very little battery. Let's try again. And I didn't bring a jump pack because I'm unprepared. Nothing. Might as well use the rest of the battery we have left. Yes! I figured that would work. Messed all around with the fuse box here. And I figured since there's no safeties on this engine, it had to be a fuel problem. There's no coolant safety, there's no oil safety, none of that. So this couldn't have damaged any of that. It probably just got all the fuel out of it or something, I don't know. We can load it onto the trailer now.
That was much better. Not that I don't trust my trusty winch that I just put on, but this would have been a very big challenge for it. I got it all strapped down. Look at this beast. Let's cross our fingers and hope we make it back all right. You can definitely feel it's back there. My GPS also just tried to route me through a road with an 11 foot six bridge and I had to back up through a bit <laughs> through an intersection. So I need to get, uh, I need to pay for trucker's path because I don't want to be doing that too often. That was pretty stressful. There's no way I could fit under an 11 foot bridge so. though.
There we go. There it is. My first hauling load done with this, or actually with my CDL in general. Volvo tractor did great with the exception of the electrical problem. That was a 415 mile trip. I used to say that I didn't like those seats in there because they weren't comfy enough, but after that trip, I'm actually impressed with them. Here's the Duramax. You guys have already seen it, but there's the extent of the damage. I was told it was non-running, but it started up as you guys saw. Just primed the fuel pump, messed around with the fuse box. So we'll have to look into it deeper, see what made it die in the first place. That'll be a future video though. I'm done for today. Very happy with the way the Volvo tractor performed. The trailer was great too. This thing had plenty of power for the Hilly I-90, I-89 interstate. Uh, no problems at all through it. Sometimes I'd get down to like 60 miles an hour, but never below that up the big hills. So it did great. Of course, we didn't get to use that winch, but I'm sure we'll be using it in the future when I get other junk cars that don't work well. Thank you guys for watching this video. I feel much more comfortable behind uh, the wheel of this thing now after that long trip. Subscribe. See you next week.